Today's subject for discussion is the UN Human Rights Council. To introduce the subject, all human rights are indivisible whether they are civil, political, including the right to life, self-determination, equality before law, freedom of expression, economic, social and cultural rights. All rights are interdependent and correlated. It was this premise that was upheld when the United Nations Commission on Human Rights, also known as UNCHR, was established in 1946. The history of UN Human Rights Council, UNHRC, goes back to when it replaced the UN Commission on Human Rights in 2006. In addition to assuming mandates and responsibilities previously entrusted to the Commission, the newly created Council reported directly to the General Assembly has expanded mandates. This include making recommendations to the General Assembly for enhancing international law in the field of human rights. The Council also undertakes a universal periodic review as to check out the fulfillment of each member's response to the core philosophy and practice of human rights obligations. The close linkage between the Council and the General Assembly created a fluent procedure and intervention in the field of human rights. On 15 March 2006, the UN General Assembly voted overwhelmingly to replace UNCHR with the UN Human Rights Council. The Council was created by the United Nations General Assembly by its Resolution 60 Oblique 251. Its first session took place from 19 to 30 June 2006. One year later, the Council adopted its institution building package to guide its work and set up its procedures and mechanisms. We will now talk about membership and structural procedures relating to UN Human Rights Council. The Council shall consist of 47 member states, which shall be elected directly and individually by secret ballot by the majority of the members of the General Assembly. The membership shall be based on equitable geographical distribution and seats are to be distributed on regional basis. The regional distribution of groups stand as below. 13 to group of African states, 13 to group of Asian states, 6 to group of Eastern European states, 8 to group of Latin American and Caribbean states, and 7 to group of Western European and other states. We will now talk about the philosophy of UNHRC. The Council works with the philosophy that perceives human rights entailing both rights and obligations. From this perspective, member states render duties in consonance with international law. The responsibility of states was to refrain from abusing and violating human rights. The working philosophy of UNHRC dictates the states to initiate positive action to facilitate the enjoyment of basic human rights. It also commits itself to a non-discriminatory principle of conducting UN humanitarian laws. The principle is present in all the major human rights treaties and provides the central theme of some of international human rights conventions such as the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination and the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. UNHRC theoretically applies to everyone in relation to human rights and freedom. UNHRC aims at prohibiting all forms of discrimination on the basis of sex, race, color, and so on. The fundamental premise of UNHRC is complemented by the principle of equality, as stated in Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which says, I quote, 
all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights." Unquote. The UN Resolution No. 12 of the 2006 upholds, I quote, that the methods of work of the Council shall be transparent, fair and impartial and shall enable genuine dialogue, unquote. The resolution has considerably directed the Council to deliver on myriad of issues relating to human rights. The resolution of March 2006 is so significant that it spelled out the complete anatomy of UNHRC. It not only dealt with listing of objectives but also it strategically worked out the ways in which the UNHRC was to take over the vacuum left behind by UNCHR. It is important to talk about how the UNHRC actually evolved in terms of functional approaches. As mentioned already, UNHRC conducts universal periodic review, mechanism which serves to assess the human rights situations in all United Nations member states. The Council works with the help of an advisory committee. The advisory committee plays a role of a think tank for the Council as it provides better know-how and advice on thematic human rights issues. The UNHRC also works with the UN Special Procedures once established by the UN Commission on Human Rights. The Special Procedure was constituted by special reporters, special representatives, independent experts and working groups. The role of the procedures is to monitor and conduct reports on thematic issues or human rights situations in specific countries. With the creation of UNHRC in March 2006, the United Nations General Assembly decided that the Council's work and functioning should be revisited every five years. The work of the Council is not a diversion from the common UN agenda on human rights. For example, it works to promote full implementation of human rights obligations undertaken by states and follow up to the goals and commitments related to the promotion and protection of human rights emanating from United Nations conferences and summits. According to the Resolution No. 6, it entrusted the Council to review and improve mandates, mechanisms, functions and responsibilities of the Commission on Human Rights in order to maintain system of special procedures, expert advice and a complaint procedure. The Council shall complete this review within one year after the holding of its first session. So far we have introduced the topic we have discussed about the philosophy of UNHRC. We have also discussed about the evolution of UNHRC. Let us now talk about the support system of UNHRC. The deliverance of UNHRC is supported by the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, also known as OHCHR. The OHCHR represents the international consensus towards universal ideals of human dignity. The OHCHR enjoy a unique mandate and the High Commissioner hates OHCHR. Through the leadership of OHCHR, it offer leadership, education and take action to empower individuals and assist states in upholding human rights. The priorities of UNHRC involve establishing alliances with country chapters, stakeholders and civil society initiatives. Assume the role and responsibilities of the Commission on Human Rights relating to the work of the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights, as decided by the General Assembly in its Resolution 48 Oblique 141 of 20 December 1993. 
The OHCHR also extends its support to the work of the United Nations Human Rights Mechanisms such as the Human Rights Council and core treaty bodies set up for monitoring states' compliance with international human rights treaties, promote the right to development, coordinate United Nations human rights education and public information activities, and strengthen human rights across the United Nations system. As the OHCHR work to ensure the enforcement of universally recognized human rights norms, including promotion of both the universal ratification and implementation of the major human rights treaties and respect for the rule of law. We will also talk about the activities and interventions of UNHRC. The activities of Human Rights Council have been multiple. The 25th session of the Human Rights Council was held from 3rd to 28 March 2013. The 2013 session discussed the plight of human rights in some select regions. It mainly decided to hold investigation into human rights violations in Sri Lanka, Syria, Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Iran, Myanmar, and South Sudan. The session not only laid down new resolutions for interventions, but also reviewed its processes of past activities. For example, the 25th session of the Council adopted 42 texts on a wide range of issues. The Council also adopted the outcome of the Universal Periodic Review of 15 countries. In a resolution on Sri Lanka, the Council requested the Office of the High Commissioner to undertake a comprehensive investigation into alleged serious violations and abuses of human rights and related crimes by both parties in Sri Lanka during the period covered by the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission and to establish the facts and circumstances of such alleged violations and of the crimes perpetrated with a view to avoiding impunity and ensuring accountability. With assistance from relevant experts and special procedures mandate holders. Similarly, the mandate of the Independent International Commission of Enquiry on Syria was extended in a resolution in which the Council condemned in the strongest terms human rights and humanitarian violations in the Syrian conflict, including the use by the Syrian authorities of starvation of civilians as a method of combat, the use of chemical weapons, the besiegement of civilians and all acts of violence directed against humanitarian actors. In its intervention, the Council argued that it was deeply troubled by the findings of the Independent International Commission of Inquiry that it had reasonable grounds to believe that there had been violations of human rights in the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. One of the difficulties that confront the Council is that the proceedings of UN at times had proven contentious from the perspectives of the offending states or parties as they alleges discrimination and diplomatic conspiracy against them. The contention is far from being addressed till date. The Council also renewed its pledge to ensure adequate housing and stop all kinds of contemporary forms of racism, xenophobia and related intolerances. As a result, the Council extended for one year the mandates of the Special Reporter on Human Rights in Myanmar. It also reiterated serious concern about the situation of the Rohingya and other minorities in Rakhine State and requested that an independent investigation be taken into all reported incidences of violence and abuses in Myanmar. Regarding country situations, the Council renewed the mandate of the independent expert on Mali for one year. The Council also extended 
technical assistance to Libya in building and strengthening national structure that had a direct impact on the maintenance of the rule of law. The Council also adopted a presidential statement on the human rights situation in South Sudan, expressing deep concern at the situation of human rights resulting from the crisis and violence that broke out in the mid-December 2013 in South Sudan, and calling upon the parties to the conflict to put an end to all violations and abuses of human rights and international humanitarian law. Concerning the human rights situation in Palestine and other occupied Arab territories, the Council adopted by vote four resolutions which include the following. Number one, on the right of Palestinian people to self-determination. Number two, on Israeli settlements in the occupied Palestine territory, including East Jerusalem and in the occupied Syrian Golan. Number three, on the human rights situation in the occupied Palestinian territory, including East Jerusalem. And four, on follow-up to the report of the United Nations Independent International Fact-Finding Mission on the Gaza Conflict. Towards the conclusion, we can say that, upholding the significance of the Human Rights Council, the UN General Secretary on 19 June 2006 remarked, I quote, This Council represents a great new chance for the United Nations and for the humanity to renew the struggle for human rights, unquote. To conclude, Human Rights Council is an intergovernmental body within the United Nations system responsible for strengthening the promotion and protection of human rights around the globe. The Council addresses situations of human rights violations and make recommendations on them. It has the ability to discuss all thematic human rights issues and situations that require its attention throughout the year. The Council is made up of 47 United Nations member states, which are elected by the UN General Assembly. The Human Rights Council replaced the former United Nations Commission on Human Rights. It can be said that the Human Rights Council in less than a decade of its existence so far has initiated various initiatives where the plight of human rights have been considerably jeopardized. The Council though not a very old mechanism within the UN system, has shown positive concerns for safeguarding human rights and ensuring dialogue and peaceful resolution of conflicts in the world. In the years to come, the Council is expected to widen and open up international discourses on human rights that would be free from hegemony of powerful states. Thank you.